Welcome to a brand new episode of the Mike Herrera podcast. I got to say thank you for everybody that's already bought tickets for our show in Bremerton. Our shows in Bremerton, two nights in Bremerton, MXPX in the Ataris, Friday, June 28th, Saturday, June 29th. The end of June, dead middle of summer. We're so excited about it. Uh, please, if you haven't bought tickets already, don't wait. Go get those tickets. MXPX.com. It means the world to us. This is playing our hometown really is so important. It really is. It's it's like putting out a, a baby and presenting your baby to the world. And we want it to go well. We want to put on the best show for you, the audience. And we don't want you to miss it because it's been so long since we've been to Bremerton, Washington, that we feel like this is the culmination of everything we've done since we were there last so playing in front of uh, our hometown people, but also fans that have been fans for not just a long time, but brand new fans that have, we've got their hooks into them and they, they must see the, us live. Bremerton is the place to see us. And, and I would love your energy. I'd love to, to, to feel you guys singing and dancing. And, and that's a real energy you can feel. You really can feel that from stage. So I'm really just visual, visualizing that in my mind, and I'm just feeling great about it. So I know this is a weird thing to talk about straight up on the podcast. We got a great episode for you, a ton of voicemails. Um, I haven't listened to them, so I, I assume they're great. They always end up being pretty great. So, all right, before we get into the voicemails, please just know that I appreciate you. Thank you for listening to MXPX. Thanks for you know, starring us on Apple Music, or if you listen on Spotify, thanks for subscribing to MXPX or liking MXPX, whatever that is on on your music library, on whatever you listen to on streaming. That makes a huge difference. So thank you for doing that. Uh, back a couple years ago, we started this thing called the MXPX Challenge. And what that is, is, um, you know, if you're just going about your day and you have this MXPX Challenge playlist on your phone, you can just put that on and play um, all the songs that we want to like get higher ranked in the ranking. But really, the bottom line is is thank you for listening to the new stuff. The new album, Find a Way Home, uh, self-titled. We have new variants up in the store at mxpx.com. So uh, any of that really helps uh, helps what we do and helps us, uh, you know, just keep keep creating. You know, um, it, it, it's a crazy life, but uh, I'm really really grateful to be doing. What, what I'm doing here with MXPX and this music and, and um, you know, when you guys support us and buy tickets to, to our hometown show in Bremerton, that encourages us. That encourages us to keep it rolling. So thank you. All right. Thank you guys so much. Let's get to these voicemails. Um, I have not listened to these, so we'll we'll figure out what's going on here. Here we go. Hey, Mike. Uh, my name is Mauricio. I live in Denver, Colorado. Uh, giving you a call because, you know, uh, sometime in the middle of last year, um, there was, um, uh, allegations against, against the band. I'm not going to name the band, but I was a huge fan of the band and essentially like it just kind of crushed me. And I guess what I wanted to ask you is like you being the artist, how would you cope with such a thing? You know, like, do you just give up on the band? Do you throw everything away? Do you still listen to the music and remember the message, not the person? It's been a little confusing and just really bummed out about it. And just wondering also maybe if you've ever dealt with something like that. You know, maybe a band that you were super into was not the band you thought they were. Uh, or maybe when you met them, you know, since you are doing it professionally, uh, you were just not like, well, this, these people are not who I thought they were. Anyways, kind of want to get your take on it i know it's kind of a deeper dive more serious question and uh i would completely understand if you don't want to go into the details um of this question so again appreciate it name's mauricio denver colorado my band it's called citra check us out everywhere thank you bye-bye well um since i don't know who you're talking about or what you're talking about and i probably hadn't heard about it anyway um I'll try to tackle this a little bit. Cancel culture. How would I deal with someone finding out something about someone uh, whose music I liked, um, an artist? 
Well, I've found that one, most of what you hear are rumors, gossip, hearsay, and a lot of it's not true. And and when usually when it is true, there's some sort of legal, I don't know, police action or there's not always police action, but like there's some sort of like. Um, okay, that person's been convicted of this crime or whatever. Now, we're probably talking about just hearsay stuff. How do I react to hearsay? Now, I'm human. Sometimes it bums me out to hear something about somebody, but then I I usually stand back and go, okay, but what if it's not true? And then I run the two scenarios and I go, well, since I don't know if it's true or not, I'm going to not worry about it. And there's my answer. I take a lot of these things with a grain of salt and I really try not to overreact. And and it's very easy to overreact to a lot of things that happen in life. Like if something goes wrong in business or with MXPX or something, I'm just like, ah. But then like five minutes later, I'm really just thinking about how can I solve this problem? Um, So I try try to use the same reaction style when it comes to rumors when it comes to other people's personal lives that i don't really have any business in or or know about um you know if i i don't know if i've really done a great job answering this question to be honest um probably not i feel like uh i don't (laughs) you know like the whole thing with like believe all women like I believe some women. I don't believe all women. I don't believe all anybody. I'm very skeptical when it comes, and I'm skeptical because I've been duped so many times. And you know, we should, we all should be. We all should be questioning. We all shouldn't just go along with what the authority tells us to. And our government, our job, our bosses. That's not always the the arbiter of of um, you know of utopian life you know like they're not the people we should look to and i'm not saying they're always wrong i'm not saying like but when you're constantly lying like say government's constantly lying to the citizens um they say you know politicians say one thing do another you you're you're changing the brain you're changing the the makeup of our brain as citizens of this country and and when we're lied to all the time when the corruption is is just looked overlooked when our politicians make some of our politicians make more money on stocks than the best investor technic i guess oh consider maybe one of the best investors in history warren buffett some of our politicians are making more on a yearly basis than he is it's like why well insider trading everybody knows that's why but can but does anybody have any willpower or political capital to take these people down not really so it just kind of keeps going you know this is something that has always happened from the early you know before the early 1900s but i'm just thinking of like when we've had this system of of government and, and politicians and you know the government's always been corrupt there's always been people that have taken advantage of their power and and in the same way uh artists are going some of them aren't prepared and 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 like me being such a kid when when we got going as a band we weren't prepared for all the fame and all the the I, I say fame with a grain of salt again but we weren't prepared for all the attention that we were getting and nowadays the attention is all people are looking for like of course we're looking for attention. We want people to pay attention to our album. We want people to pay attention to our live shows. And in the same way, a, a, a just a, a civilian on the street wants people to pay attention to their tweet or their Instagram post or their... I mean, we're no different in that way. Me, me and you are the same. We have, we have a Facebook page that we want people to read the post. We want you to see the poster. Um, you know, we're coming to Bremerton. We want you to to see that poster and and know that, you know, if you come to Bremerton, you can buy that poster. Um, we're going to have those, you know, like things like that. Like we're not so different, 
But getting back on the subject, uh, a lot of a lot of like being rational about a particular issue, something as serious as sexual harassment, sexual assault, anything like that. Uh, that that's a hard line because people are so emotional when they when they hear something, when they see something online it triggers them immediately and I, I get triggered too. Like we, we all get triggered. And so that's why I say I try to not react immediately publicly. I can, you can react like that to yourself, even maybe to your best friend or, or a few best friends or your wife or, or husband or partner or whatever. Yeah. But when you immediately react online, it's out there for everybody to see. And you might be like, Oh, uh, that's not really what I meant. You know, it's funny because thinking about my songwriting when I was a kid, I didn't realize these songs were going to be around 30 years later, 20 years later, 50 years later, eventually. And what it these songs kind of are, are big social media posts. They're, they're social media posts that that you can you can look at these lyrics and go, well, this is what he says. This is what he believes. This is him. It's like, that was 30 years ago. I mean, I didn't even know about the internet back then. Like, there's so much about life that has changed since then. I think um, I think every situation is different. There are definitely situations where somebody's guilty, somebody's doing some bad stuff. Uh, and there's, there's other times where it's all just public, not even public, it's like a few people that are really, really... Uh, amplifying the message, the negative message. So it happens both both ways, I think. Um, I again, I feel like this is a, a a tough tough question to ask. I haven't I have thought about it, but I haven't talked about this kind of thing publicly. Um, so I think with anything, um, being rational about the subject is a more broad way to look at it and when it comes to individual cases then rationality can be set aside sometimes uh for sensitivity now it doesn't mean the truth goes out the window but the sensitivity part can be applied to an individual better but i don't think it's i don't think it's right or correct to apply a sensitivity an oversensitive way of dealing with with the broad spectrum of different people that are some are bad, some are good, some are being accused of something they didn't do, some are getting away with something that they did do, and and all of the other things, right? So like in that way, the broad spectrum of the issue, I feel I need to be a little more pragmatic, a little more reasonable, a little less sensitive to the individual things happening so hopefully that makes uh makes some sense and um all right if there's follow-up questions you know you know please call in uh if you want to be part of the podcast by the way call in 1-360-830-6660 leave a message give me a topic give me a tell me a story give give me something good Give us some meat. Give us give us a, a good a good thing to, to get going on. Like, um, you know, sometimes people want to talk about aliens or Bigfoot or something, but you know how it pertains to MXPX and do we have any stories about ghosts or you know whatever you want to call in. Uh, but I appreciate your call, Mauricio, and I hope that helps. It probably didn't, but just know that um, not everything you hear online is true. And a lot of the things you hear online are true, but just not in the same exact way that you're hearing it. Like people often are very terrible people, but the, it's like, but the, the story is not completely true. So that, that's the unfortunate world we live in. There's, there's terrible people out there, but there always has been, like I was mentioning with Congress and our government and politicians, there's, there's always been people that will take advantage of, um, the situation and, um, that that didn't change that didn't change um you know no matter what we did 
with our government, who we elected president, who was in charge of Congress. Like that's always been the case where there's some people that will take advantage of the system. And uh, some of them are obviously terrible people, but some of them are seemingly good people that hide the fact that they're, they're insider trading on the side and, you know, making voting on policies that will make them money rather than voting on policies that will help people keep jobs, not starve, like, you know, on and on. So the corruption is something that I hate about, about humans. You know, we can all be corrupted in different ways. You know, everybody has a, that line they draw, but, you know, it's something that, that I've always written about in my lyrics. Um, the corruption within uh, religion, the corruption within governments, the corruption within companies and, and just groups of people. You know, when we have teams, there's corruption in teams. There's uh, some people that are, that get edged out. There's some people that, that uh, are embraced that are, aren't good at, aren't good for the rest of the, the group, but, but they suck up to the boss so that they get, you know, there's all types of dynamics and, and, and different types of corruption. But, but honestly, like the corruption is something that's never going to go away, but we got to keep fighting it. We can't, we can't just go, well, if you can't beat them, join them. I, I refuse. I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I've been around a while and I've definitely changed my views on a lot of politics, a lot of life issues. Uh, but the one thing that never changes is I am against corruption. I don't care what party you vote for. I don't like the corruption and there's corruption everywhere. Um, and it doesn't mean you throw out everything because, you know, a few people are corrupt, but when you have most of most politicians are corrupt, uh, the ones that have been around long enough, I, I, I just don't know what to tell you. I just, from, from my standpoint is we, the people just have to live the best life we can. And part of that is putting good music out into the world. Part of that is, is going to events and being part of something bigger than ourselves. And, you know, I feel like, okay, well, MXPX isn't the biggest thing in the world, but we've got fans all over the world. We make people happy. We, we get to do something that's, uh, that brings so much joy uh, to not only our own lives, but to the lives of people that interact with us. And, um, you know, not every song like is about happiness, but I think the overarching theme is we got to find our own best life. We got to find our own place here in punk rock in, I mean, it doesn't even have to be, do with punk rock. It's bigger than punk rock. Even this life is, is so important. And, um, I'm proud to, to be part of your lives. You know, if you're, if you're list, a regular listener to the podcast, you know, that doesn't, that doesn't come off lightly to me. It's hard to know how to react to it because I should be so happy. I should be excited about it. But at the same time, it's like, well, this is my life every day. I'm doing this podcast, you know, every week and, uh, you know, things kind of do get routine, but, but really when I, when I sit and think about it, you know, I'm so grateful for the life I have. And, and, um, and that's the reaction I want when I hear things, not, you know, I, you know, I, I do get mad about things and I get bent out of shape and I get triggered, but, but, um, we don't have to be triggered by some, somebody else's life that really doesn't really impact ours. I mean, I guess you, you might have told yourself that some artist's life impacts your life and it might because they might not release more songs or something if they get canceled, but they probably will. Um, I, I think uh, it's just so hard to know what really is true that when we let ourselves be manipulated emotionally online, and like I said, we, we, I get emotionally anip, manipulated. I get triggered too. So it's, don't, I'm not preaching. I'm, I'm really just talking out this, this idea uh, for all of us, hopefully. Um, but, you know, when, when you could when it happens enough you can kind of realize oh it's happening again you know and when i'm in a bad mood and i'm rude to somebody i don't sometimes i stop it in, in before i say something rude sometimes i say something and i'm like oh, i shouldn't have said that or now my wife's really mad at me you know 
and you know immediately, you know. And so that's all I'm saying is is if we take a little more time, be a little little less quick to react in a negative way. Um and 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 I'm not saying there's a way to react positively when it comes to hearing bad news about a sexual assault or something. I'm not saying react positively about that, but take a minute and go, it's terrible to hear, but it also might not be true. You know, like, so like these, these things like come in different levels and the information doesn't always come right away. You get one little piece of information and then you get more information and you're like, okay, well, I wish I hadn't uh, put out that tweet now that I know the real, the real deal, you know? So it's just like, that's, that's how I do it. I just, I don't react publicly to any of that stuff because so much of it has ended up not being true. Like I could go into like COVID stuff, uh, masking, not being a thing that you, that worked. Um, uh, you know, the, 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 the thing, you know, the, the, the shot that you get that really doesn't work, you know, like, so it's just like, okay, it works like for a little while. And then it's like basically nothing. So, um, there's just a lot that comes out later. And so I just, and I've, I've said this a lot on the podcast. I just, I know that I could be wrong if I only base my my decisions and opinions on <laughs> social media posts, so or at least on the first few. So you, uh, you, there, there's a an aggregate that needs to come in of multiple data points for me to really go, okay, this might be true now. This might actually be true, and so and and I give people the benefit of the doubt and this and that, but you know what's most likely true usually is john stewart was was talking about like you know what's the name of that lab in wuhan oh wuhan oh it's the, the vir- virality you know lab or whatever so he was just basically saying like people ignore the obvious facts and the obvious truths to to use any other little thing like saying oh it was a bat that that created covid or whatever like i'm not I'm not a ride or die anything. Like I just see all the information. I'm like, okay, I see people that are saying there's no way that it came from the lab. It came from the bat. And then I see other people saying there's no way it came from the bat. It came from the lab. So I'm like, I'm just taking the information. I'm absorbing the information. I'm, I'm thinking about the information and I'm not believing one way or the other. I'm going, okay, maybe most likely it was this, but We'll, we'll we'll see we'll we'll just see so that that's kind of where i am <laughs> these days because politics and social media and the 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 business landscape are so insane and and a lot of people will tell you you have to pick a side you have to be either pro trump or pro biden or this or that i'm like no i don't like i'm not inside this this thing you know these i'm not on the i'm not in the league you know, as far as that goes, like I'm in the human league and and I know that's so dumb and it's cheesy to say, but there's just too many cool people I've met. You know, there's, there's so many, uh, uh, Jewish people I've met that are awesome. There's so many Palestinian, maybe not just Palestinian, but Arab people I've met. Um, I'm sure I've met some Palestinian people, but what I'm saying is I just, there's so many cool people in the world that there's never, there's never a time where I can't find somebody of of uh, a country, an ethnicity, a, a, a style, like somebody that's into a certain style. I can always find even somebody like even if you hate country music, I like country music. But even if I hated it, I could still find a country guy that I like. You know, so like that's what I'm saying. Like I, I maybe there's maybe there's like. Uh, you know, neo-Nazis. Maybe I can't find a, a neo-Nazi that I like. Somebody that's blatantly saying, I hate you. I hate everyone that doesn't look like me. Sure, I'm going to go ahead and say that's a red line. But but for the most part, um, even, you know, Republican, Democrat, um, Arab, Jewish, you know, all of these, like there's so many cool people on that exist in all these groups of people that I hate to... Uh, I hate to choose a side, you know, um, you can choose a side politically on issues. Sure. That's definitely different. But, uh, when it comes to just like 
only hating like hating all of these people or and loving all of these people it's like but i mean i'm mexican i'm american i'm 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 english and welsh i my people my mexican people on my dad's side i'm sure i don't like every single one of them you know <laughs> but that's the thing is like you, you know when when you when you have so many data points and and people uh it ceases to become an individual you know you're not seeing people as individuals you're seeing things in a group and and that's very real too but it's just a whole different ball game at that point all right i've rambled on let's get to the next voicemail all right next voicemail here we go hey mark this is brandon from southern kentucky um I was super pumped to see you all when we were young. Been a lifelong fan. Just never had a chance to come check you all out. Um, I've got from your vinyls that I actually got a signed um, MXPX album on the way. Uh, I'm super pumped for everything you all do. Big fan. Um, rock on. Keep up the great work. Uh, if I had a question, it would be Mm-hmm. what's your favorite tattoo thank you bud <laughs> all right favorite tattoo uh something tells me you weren't ready for uh the question part but i appreciate the call brandon uh when we were young fest was a good time i can't believe you made it out from uh, kentucky down there but a lot of good bands so it makes sense um my favorite tattoo well um hmm that's a good question you know, I, I would say traditionally my Poconaccio Punk. It's right here on my on my arm. But I won't show you. That. Well, no, I could show you that. I could show you that. Here we go. Right there. So if you're watching on YouTube, you can see it. Uh, another, but I would say my more recent favorite is my Cobra on my hand. Love that thing. And I also like my Sloop, which is on my hand as well, like right on, above my thumb really hard to see um i just i just like the little sloop it's a little boat looks really cool um thanks for thanks for calling in i appreciate it um i think you called in one more time let's see let's see if it's this i should have vetted this but let's see if it's the same or if you have a new question brandon hey mike uh this is brandon from southern Kentucky again um okay I just had a random question. Um, I was listening to Faction Punk on Sirius XM, and I noticed you're quite heavily popular on there. And I was just wondering, what does a band like MXPX go through to be on uh, such a platform as a Faction Punk or an Emo Project or even a Pop Rocks, which I believe I've heard you on there as well. Um, And just any info and... um, and what was it like to first hear your song on the radio, say a Sirius XM, not necessarily like a radio station um, in Bremerton or a Seattle type area? Um, just kind of, just the, the overall excitement and knowing that anyone all over the world could be hearing your song at the very same time. Um, thank you, and I'll get off. Bye. Cool, cool. Thanks for calling in again, Brandon. Just stacked you up there. Um, Faction Punk, you know, we have uh, we really been been uh, in cahoots with them for a while. We've known, you know, a, a, I met um, a guy named Colin. He was he he used to be on air talent, and then he became like a behind the scenes producer. And just knowing him over the years, he I would send him a song like a brand new song. Um, like I remember sending him let's ride off of self-titled and asking him to, to put it up and saying like, this is coming out this Friday. You, you're welcome to play it early if you want or whatever. And he would get it on. And, and it was just kind of like a little back door to the station. And, and I think that's, it's not always what it takes. I mean, it, it, when you're a band, as long as MXPX has been a band, you build relationships over the years. And of course we have a catalog of music. We have people that have, you know, we've been around. So um, I, I know that it doesn't just happen if you don't do anything. You got to sort of like, 
you got to talk to people. You got to ask. You got to you got to say like because other bands have radio uh, reps. They call them like a record label rep, a representative, somebody from the label that goes and like talks to the la- talks to the radio station. The the the, the pr- um, is it a program manager, the PM they call it at radio. Uh, that person decides what goes on air, what songs get played, what songs get added to the regular rotation. So there's, if you get added at a, rec, uh, at a, at a station, I mean, your song is going to get played like regularly for a while. And if you get added, they add it to a certain amount of rotations. So it could be like, oh, we're, we're getting 10 spends a week, which is not a lot, uh, but it's decent. And, but if you're getting, you know, 30 spends a week, that's like when you would hear Nirvana smells like teen spirit over and over and over on the radio or, or something newer, like, um, like Katy Perry or something, you know, like, uh, um, let's see, uh, Miley Cyrus. She's always got some, some, some new song that's getting pushed out there. Anyway, I'm getting sidetracked back to, uh, the radio station. There's, there's, um, there's a lot of promo that gets, sort of pushed towards satellite radio. We've always done uh, in, in studio interviews with them. So I'll, when we'll go to New York um, or I'll go to New York by myself or something and go to the offices, to the studio, um, you, you go in, it's a, it's a high rise office building. You go to the green room, hang out, warm up, get ready, go in, do the interview or if you're doing a performance, you do the performance usually first and then go in and do the interview and you're just sitting in a radio station DJ booth and um, you do a bunch of liners. So like if you give them things like, hey, this is Mike Herrera from MXPX. You're listening to our new album, Find a Way Home on Sirius XM. You know, they're going to use that and they'll play it. And so like if you do things like that for them, that that's like one one hash, or, you know, it's like scratching their back and they, they scratch yours. So, yeah, it's a it's a it's a thing, um, and then you know if you get into the radio game, you got to do that all throughout the nation <laughs> and do it. You know, it's great because Sirius Satellite is it has different stations within their own uh, radio company or whatever. But like you said, it's national. It's not local news or local you know music radio. It's national and it goes everywhere. And of course. Uh, social media as well so um yeah we love it uh shout out to faction punk if you listen and if you think about it please request mxpx because as as always you know uh not everybody that used to work there works there now so we're always having to like meet new people uh cement some of these new relationships and it always helps when we're like hey like we're mxpx we've been here a while but we got fresh new songs. Please play us. And, and it helps when you write in or call in or whatever. I don't know what you do. Probably write in. Play MXPX. Play Let's Ride. Play Stay Up All Night. Play whatever, you know. Um, we appreciate all that. So, all right. Let's get to, let's get to another one. Oh, hello. Uh, my name is Ryder, and I'm 10 years old. And um, uh, at the showbox, I met you guys. And... Uh, uh, you signed a poster, and I just wanted to say thank you for signing that and doing the main group. And I have a bunch of, like, Wes and Jake stuff and um, uh, MXPX stuff in my room. And um, I just wanted to thank you guys for how good your music is. So, bye. Thank you for calling, Ryder. That is so cool. I love that. Thanks for coming out to see us in, at the show box. We uh, we loved that show. It was so much fun. That really kicked off this whole year for us. It was at the end of last year, but it was it was really a great way to say goodbye to 2023 and hello to 2024. Ten years old. What a great age. Um, I, I just, you know, there's so much happening and you're learning so much. You're learning so fast. So like, enjoy it. I know uh, it's hard to like, you know, really have a perspective on that. So just enjoy life. And, uh, and I appreciate your call. Thanks, Ryder. All right. What's next? What's up, Mike? It's Joe from St. Pete. Um, just been here watching Furnace Fest on YouTube. 
just trying to check out some live shows with the new song on it. Super rad. Um, the new stuff you guys are doing. Um, I am going to the Orlando show, so I'm looking forward to that. And I will see you guys there and um, stick around afterwards to meet you guys. Um, really loving the new album and just the energy that you guys are bringing kind of reminds me of like what I was saying the first early days where I watched you guys through the window with uh, your show at the Refuge. So uh, super cool to see you guys keep the same energy that you had way back then and bring it to the stage now. And um, I know that bands don't talk about like a uh, set list or anything like that, but I'm hoping maybe you and uh, the Ataris will perform together the San Dimas. I know you guys covered that. Um, but even if you don't, I'm looking forward to seeing them as well. You know, I've never seen them live, so I'm super stoked about that. So I guess I will see you guys in Orlando next month. So, uh, all right, keep doing what you do. Love the new music, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Thanks for the call, Joe. Yeah, Furnace Fest was so much fun. Uh, we we just we kicked it out on that, man. It was just like all our friends were there, a bunch of people we knew, um, bands that we hadn't seen in so many years. It was it was really cool. I really I really have great memories from Furnace Fest. Um, and then Orlando. Orlando was off the hook. Ian from Newfound came out, hung with us, uh, him and his wife, a bunch of other, a couple other friends, um, we loved Orlando. It was sold out. Thank you, everybody, for, for you know buying tickets for that. It was just a blast. So I hope you had a good time. I know the show's gone. This was before the show when you left the voicemail. But um, we, didn't, we didn't play San Dimas with the Ataris. Um, and, and I'll tell you why. Because we thought about it. You know, We talked about it a bunch. And we we're just like, you know, if you came up during our show and played San Dimas, it just... It's cool, but it would be better if the Ataris played Sam Dimas because it's an Atari song. So if you're going to see the Ataris live, you want to see Sam Dimas. You want to see them play it. And then I was like, well, and if we're not playing it, I guess I could come out and sing with you. But then it was just like, but why? Because people want to hear, they want to hear Chris sing Sam Dimas. But if the Ataris weren't on the show, then they would want to hear Chris sing San Dimas with MXPX. So that's what happened in, at the Palladium in Los Angeles. The Ataris weren't on that show, but Chris came out and he sang San Dimas with us. So I think that's the philosophy, and it's probably too much information, too, too insider baseball. But we really do think about these things, and, and the reason why we didn't do it is because we wanted the show to be even better. I know the heart wants what the heart wants, but because we didn't do that, more people were happy seeing the Ataris and get to see them play San Dimas. And, they were, and then other people were also happy seeing MXPX play a song that we wouldn't have played if we had played San Dimas. So like, they don't know that they missed, would have missed a song, but they would have missed one of those songs we played. So like, it's just this whole like revolving sliding glass doors of, of the possibilities of, of uh, the dimensions that we go through. But too crazy anyway the refuge first place we ever played in florida uh brings back brings back memories and it, it is great to be doing it after all these years and to be selling out shows here in orlando and hopefully in in bremerton hopefully people you know continue to to roll that because you know we we just i never assume we'll sell out and and most of the time they do every every few shows don't but most of the time the shows sell out so it's just like I guess the fact that I never assume that they do may be why they're selling out because I'm I'm really trying to to tell people and let people know, hey, did you know we got the show? Two nights in Bremerton, June twenty eighth and twenty ninth. Plenty of time. Bring the family, come come see Bremerton, go see Seattle, whatever it is. Um anyway, I'm I'm digressing. But thanks for the call. Let's see what's next. Well, if you didn't get my First message that I sent, I just want to say it again. Oh. Hi, my name is Ryder. I'm 10 years old and really like your music. And I have, um, I met you guys at the show, uh, show box 
and you hung my poster, and I got a picture with you. Yep. And when you were um playing, and when you went down like to um in the audience, audience stuff, and got up on like the railing stuff, mm-hmm. a pit fell out, and one of the security guards gave it to me. And I have um, so I have one of your pics, and I went over the summer. Last year, I went to like I went to no effect. Um, uh, less than Jake. Nice. Of course, and I saw you guys there. Um, and yeah. I went to Blink-182, um, The Offspring, Simple Plan, and, uh, Sum 41, and went to million, a bunch of, uh, shows and stuff, and, um, I have your guys' signed um, picture desk, and I just wanted to say thank you for all the good music stuff and, um, like, being, uh, super cool, nice dudes <laughs> to, like, uh, uh, support their fans, and, uh, um, thanks for doing that meet thank- and greet. Thank you. That um, was really fun. Oh, yeah. And I got the Diesel Boy set list from uh, Dave. Nice. And uh, it was really cool. And so uh, I just uh, wanted to say thank you um, for being like... Um, Having really good music and like, um, I love your guys' music. And plus, um, I have a really big list from Jake Wall with a bunch of my, uh, bunch of stuff. So I just want to thank, say thank you for all the good music and good, uh, uh, fans and good shows you've done over the years. You're welcome. Thank you, Bye. Ryder. Thank you. That was an even better call than the first call. More detail. I love hearing about Diesel Dave. I love hearing about the set list. I love hearing about how you saw us at Less Than Jake. Um, that It's funny because we went and hung out with Less Than Jake at the Showbox, uh, you know, five months before we played the Showbox. But uh, we were already planning that show, and we knew we were going to do it. So I had called Dave, Diesel Dave. Uh, I texted him first, but, I, you know, I think I had called him. Yeah. I, was, I texted him, like, hey. I'm heading to the show box to see Les and Jake come out and hang. And he's like, oh, I can't, I'm this and that. I'm like, ah, oh, man. All right, that's cool, whatever. And then he's like, all right, I'm coming. Is it too late? I'm like, no, come out now. I, I, you're good. I told, I told him to put you on the list. So Diesel Dave came out and we, we just went into Les and Jake's dressing room and just drank all their drinks and just partied with them and just it was it was so much fun it was one of the fu- most fun i've had at a show because i wasn't playing but i also was it was just like being at a party you know and and that's kind of what it what it's like to be backstage um not always i mean plenty of times it's very boring but uh it's like being at a like a little small party with some of your friends and you're just like mingling and talking and and hanging out so all right, let's do a couple more. Yo, yo, Mike, what's going on, brother? Uh, Gene Everett from uh, the New York City area, actually now up near the Connecticut border. Uh, thanks for the shout out. <laughs> but um, yeah, man, New York City made it down. Uh, had a knee brace on, had a cane. I had a recent knee surgery, so I was almost didn't go. And then my friends were like, "Come on, dude, we'll throw you in the back seat. We'll we'll bring you to the door." You know, you can get a seat, you know. We called the venue. They got a, a section for you. And uh, so glad I came, dude. Uh, checked out the Ataris. Loved it. They were they were great. They were on fire. Um, I know that it seemed like the set got, got cut slightly short, but it was, it was action-packed. It was awesome. And then for your guys' set, I did get a seat. If you're looking out from the stage, it's kind of the section on the, on the floor, right? And... Uh, Ended up seeing, like, three dudes I hadn't seen in 10 years. Um, the guy that brought me to my first punk show, MXPX Tramps, 1998, October 98. Damn, I am opened up, and you had Element open up. I think you were showcasing them at the time. And then we saw you at the Chance of Poughkeepsie 
two days later with the get of kids and cooter later autopilot oh, off yeah. opening up so it was really rad it was like a trip down memory lane you know the dude that took me to my first mxpx show bumping into him hadn't seen him in like a decade and man it was a great set perfect balance of the new stuff bunch of life in general stuff it was just great and the new songs sound great live mike we love you brother i'll shut up now i'm probably getting close to three minutes but uh man you guys are better than ever like <coughs> like no joke and uh shout out to uh dave stradling shout out to uh mike fusco frank Botino, john munsinger and uh ashley later dude that's that makes me feel good man thank you gene i appreciate it i always love hearing from you um Connecticut, what up? Um, the Poughkeepsie, I remember Autopilot Off. Those guys were so cool. Those guys are still cool. Like Chris from Autopilot Off was the coolest dude. Like, I don't know. We we, we would be friends. We, we are friends, uh, to be honest. But we would be like good friends, I feel like, if we lived in the same town or near. I just never see him. But like now and again, I'll, I'll hear from him and... and it always just like, man, that guy is so solid. So, yeah, the autopilot off. What up? Tramps. Sam I Am. Yeah, that was cool, man. Those guys are, we don't know them super well, but we, we always really like that band, Sam I Am. So we had them, we had them on that show. Um, Tramps was one of my favorite places in the whole world to play. Love that venue. Always had great shows there. It always felt great. The energy felt great in that room. And, um, you know, I feel like Webster, it's not the same kind of room. It's different. Webster is more traditional. It's great. Like, no no issues at all with Webster. It, it really is a, a really nice room. Um, I think it's the memories attached to, to Tramps, honestly. It's got to be the nostalgia of why I, if I walked in there now or how it was, it probably is tiny probably very small it's probably not a great stage probably not great sight lines all these things the sound who knows i don't remember how it sounded um but like it's like we we get pulled in by these nostalgic memories but yeah new york this time around philly that trip was epic uh no complaints both shows sold out um both crowds were great um you know we we just we really care. We care about the set. We care about like putting on a good show for people and hearing that you, you've seen so many shows over the years, Gene, and, and hearing that you really enjoyed it and thought it was as good as ever and, and a good balance of new and old. And, uh, man, that means a lot. It really does. So thank you. Um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Next, next voicemail. This, this one I think is a two parter as well as I, I see the same number um for two so we'll see what happens hey mike it's jude uh from new york city on around monday i mean friday and um uh, i'm the one who was played who played tech magnet on the base in new york city and webster hall i just want to say thank you very much to to invite me on stage for my birthday you know tom didn't believe it but it was <laughs> awesome uh, it was a great experience it was a dream come true best birthday gift ever my girlfriend loves your band. She comes to respect because she's a metalhead, and now she's new to the punk rock, and she loves MXPX. So the question is, is um, how does it feel when when you got fans from the past that are older now, and now they're bringing their kids, the new generations, to the punk rock show? What mm. is? How does it feel? Like how does it feel? Like like does it feel like you achieved something greater, bigger? That's all I always want to know because I always see kids in shows and, and MXPX shows, and I thought it was really, really amazing. So that's that's what I want to know. But yeah, thanks again for letting me play Chick Magnet on the bass in New York City. So hope to see you guys again soon. You killed it, dude. You killed it. Um, hey, I love. Obviously, I love to see younger generations at the shows. I love to see parents bring their kids. Um, some teenagers, you know, parents bringing teenage kids. It's wild. It, it is. I guess, uh, I mean, I'm not going to sound super smart saying this, uh, but it's just over and over. It's just kind of like, 
it's shocking. It's shocking that we have been able to been a band, you know, be a band over 30 years, long enough for people to have children and then them old enough to come to see the show. So it's just like, all right, you know, let, it, this is a gift that I've been given and I don't want to squander this gift. I want to, I want to continue giving the people why it is they passed it down to their kids. So that's what I think about when I see kids as I go, I want to be as great, if not greater than we were when your parents got into us. I want to do that for you, for these kids, for these young people. I want, I want them to be blown away because it's so much harder Maybe it's not. I don't know. It seems like it's harder to impress kids these days because they're they're constantly they got iPads, they got cell phones, they got all these videos coming in and all these trickery things. And it's just like for them to be impressed by MXPX in our show, that is humbling, and it gives me the motivation to continue. So thank you, thank you, everyone that that passes uh, our music along. You know, not just kids. You know, pass it along to your friends. Your 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 kids kid your kids friends like you know I'm not gonna complain the more the merrier uh, great job on the bass Jude you you nailed it it was really good and happy birthday Tom did not believe it was your birthday he thought it was a scam but uh, you know he thought I was being a sucker for letting you come up and believing you but uh, e even if it wasn't your birthday you did great all right let's let's uh, let's move on well there was one other voicemail let's see what this is. Hey, Mike, it's Jude. Um, I played bass at uh, New York City at Webster Hall on February 9th. Yep, yep. And it was really amazing. Once again, thank you so much for giving me the chance. It was a great birthday gift. It was a great birthday moment. Me and my girlfriend love the show. <laughs> uh, my girlfriend is a new fan now. She's, she's a fan of you guys. She, love, she loves the new album. She loves the old stuff, especially the new album. So do I. It's really awesome. Um, I just want to say the first time I heard of MXPX is, um, is I was literally watching YouTube of WatchMojo.com of the best pop punk bands of all time, the top 10, and you were like the number 10 on the list, MXPX. And I thought that the energy was so cool, so I decided to listen to like a few songs until I listened to Teenage Politics. And I got to say, it blew my mind. It blew my mind instantly <laughs> because it was that album that introduced me to punk in the first place and what got me to play instruments and playing punk rock music so yeah so i just wanted to say i just wanted to say thanks again for letting me play bass it was a real honor it's a real pleasure and i uh, hope to see you guys again in the future oh and also um i'm also doing a a mxpx pokenata full album cover I'm going to be covering the entire album, like, and I'm going to be uploading it on YouTube, and I hope that you would get a chance to, like, take a listen, to let me know what you think, if I if I did good or if I suck. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I'll be, I'll be doing them, um, I'll be uploading it on YouTube very soon so that you and the rest of the bands could take a listen. So, uh, yeah, uh, thanks a lot. All right, so you get... You kind of, I think you you did two messages similar, but you added all this stuff about that. So, like, yeah, good job. You got two messages. Uh, Jude, submit that to to the Music Monday. Uh, submit us a YouTube link, and um, I'll play it. We'll, we'll tell you what I think about it, and uh, we'll do that. Do it that way, dude. Again, thank you. You're great. Thanks for. Uh, it's cool to to hear how people hear about MXPX and and. Uh, a YouTube playlist or whatever is just as good as any. I love that. All right, let's do one more, one more voicemail and uh, we'll wrap it up for the week. Everyone. Thank you. Hey, Mike, Diane calling from Baltimore, Maryland. I just wanted to tell you that we saw you guys in Philly uh, two nights ago and it was just the coolest experience. Um, I got to see it with my 14 year old daughter and I was introduced to punk rock uh, by MXPX um, 
introduced in the church in a little town of Bellingham, Washington. So I also have a 360 number. <laughs> uh, been in Baltimore about 20 years, though. But it was super special to, to see you guys. We actually saw you at the When We Were Young Festival. Um, but as crazy as that festival was, it was neat to come home and, and just have a more intimate uh, show with you guys and the Ataris were super cool. So it was just super special to see you guys and then to have the opportunity uh, to meet you at the end of the night um, and have my MXPX 12 man jersey signed. So super rad and just want to say thanks so much and really appreciate all that you guys do. Take it easy. Thanks for calling, Diane. Yeah, Baltimore, we've been to Baltimore, but it's been a long time. So thanks for coming out to Philly. Um, Philly was off the hook. We had a great time. It was great to meet everybody. And uh, doing those shows, you know, there's still like, I don't know, average 1,500. I think my 1,800 at that show or something. But um, whatever it is, it's uh, it's so much smaller than when we were Young Fest, which was like, I don't know, 50,000 more. It was probably more than that. It was like 80,000. There was a lot of people there in Vegas, and um, it's just a sea of people. Like, at one point, I went out into the crowd and was just like, I don't know how people just hang out here. Like, just being around that many people all day is wild. So, yeah, coming out to see us at a club, at a theater, is uh, it's the way I love to see shows. I love to go go to headliners and, and see a band really really make it happen, but... Of course, uh, you know, anytime I'm I'm seeing the Descendants and it's outside at a festival, it's not like the ideal place to see them. I still watch it. It's great, you know, but but yeah, if, if I had to choose, I would always choose to see a band at, at their show. So um, love it. All right. Hey, thank you. I appreciate it. Bellingham. That's uh, yeah, it's a good town. My sister went to college there. Um, we we don't play too often up there. It's kind of there's no real venues that i know of i don't i'm not sure but um my, my band tumbledown played played up there arthur played up there um and then mxpx played up there a couple times like i was saying but like random weird places very strange but uh glad ba baltimore's treating you well diane and and you can see us you know out on the east coast always cool to to meet people from washington out somewhere somewhere else so all right that's it. That's it for voicemails. Thank you all. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Shout out to Bob McKnight, producer Bob. Thank you for doing what you do, my friend. If you guys want to be on the podcast, if you want to call in, you have a question, a topic, the number is 360-830-6660. If you want to submit for Music Monday, you can submit a, a song via YouTube link and give us the band, the band name or artist name and the song in the post on the Mike Herrera Facebook message group, or Mike Herrera podcast Facebook group. All right, mxpeaks.com for tickets. We're kind of, we're going to be in Bremerton. We're going to be in Bremerton two nights, June 28th and 29th. That's a Friday and Saturday. I know you want to go. Tickets available. Go get them at mxpeaks.com. And uh, we'll be at a few other places with no effects. Um, tickets have already been on sale for those. So uh, I'm sure you already know about that. But um, that's it. New album, Find a Way Home. We have new variants. Um, if you didn't already know about the Eclipse variant, it might be sold out by now. But I think we did, uh, we did the Eclipse variant. Um, and if we didn't, then you're hearing about something that didn't work out. But uh, a lot of, you know, I think it probably did work out. So I'm going to just gamble on this one and let, let it be. Leave it alone. And um, you guys have a great week. All right. Peace. Peace.